Carnival has played a huge part in Liverpool's history, originating in Toxic. It's grown from a few small floats into an international outburst of colour, culture and creativity. Over the course of this documentary, we're going to be looking at Carnival past, present and future. London, Leeds, you had them come from everywhere. You know, it's really something to look forward to. People enjoyed it, it was all free, and it was food left, right, and centre. People from like Lodge Lane were coming down there, you know, shop owners, cake shops, Greg's, all them. And it went on for like two or three days. Everything was done at the Caribbean Centre. It was all held at the Caribbean Centre. They had the, the car park at the back. They used to start off by the centre go down Crown Street, all down London Road and everywhere and thousands of people would come out and watch them. They were good times then. It was packed. All the floats and all the costumes and that was lovely. My grandkids look forward to it. You know, they dress up on the floats and whatever. They come round Parliament Street, all round, down uh, towards the, the Royal, past the Royal, into town, back up Berry Street, Redshaw Street, by the Cathedral. And it was really great. We used to have good fun and then we'd come back up by the centre, you know, and then we'd finish it up up there. Well, the carnival used to go to Prince Park and they used to have all the stalls and the chicken and the rice and the peas and all that. In the night time, there'd most probably be a dance or something going on, you know. Night time, the Caribbean would open the doors and people would go in there, that place used to get packed. You'd see people that you hadn't seen quite a long time, you know, they would be there. The people that used to like come round on the carnival, they go from like Everton, Southport, Chester. Black, white, African, West Indian, they all lot of them come together. And it was a good parade, a good parade, they would have the big uh, set to in, the, in where Gramercy School was, the back of the, back of the school there, and it was packed. It was a nice carnival, it was a nice atmosphere. We had people come down with floats from London. We had them come from wherever. And, you know, we had a really good time there. It brings us all together. And anything that brings us together has got to be good. How important was the carnival um, to the community? But you said that people were coming from all over the place. So from the city itself, how important do you think it was? It kept the community together. And it kept families together. It kept kids together. Um, Kids that didn't know each other, I mean, we were live, living next door to each other, didn't know each other. Carnival, man, we were there. Like, it was like, I'd call it a family party, that's all it was, with like other people coming in, and it made it bigger, made it stronger. It was ours, you know what I mean? It belonged to us. And it was lovely to have something like that, and going through the whole of town and all the people from everywhere coming out to watch it, you know, and clapping it and everything. What are your kind of first memories of, of Carnival? Well, my first memories of Carnival was just fantastic. It was like community spirit. We had love in our community then, and everyone would come together, and from all different communities, all different sides of Liverpool. So I participated, me and my sister Rose, we dressed up as African women, and we were in the Liverpool Echo with our regalers on, and we were also Hawaiian girls, and my auntie got all the um, streamers, you know, them colourful streamers, and made us the skirts. How would you describe the atmosphere? Wow, the atmosphere was like, oh, it was just so joyful. You were excited for days before, you know, before the makeup of it. It was a build-up, you know, you'd be there sorting out everything, participating, everybody participating, mums, nans, you know, guys, and it was, it was just fantastic. How important do you think it was to the city as well, because it was obviously bringing people into the city? Well, it was very, very important to the city, because it was bringing people in, like I said, from all over, from all different parts. Like I said, London, Birmingham, probably further afield. So, for the city, it was fantastic because we had people coming in. But what I think it was most important for was for the people of the community, for the culture, yeah. because we held on to our culture. They were the days, the carnival, Liverpool Carnival, was 
I reckon it was probably better than none. Well, I will say it was better than not an El Carnival. It was better than there, definitely. What were your um, first memories of, of Carnival back in the day? It goes back to my childhood, you know, to tell you the truth. I remember when I was about, I think, about nine years old, and I used to live on Madeleine Street, and then the Carnival used to go a bit more around the area, um, and it came up Warwick Street. And I remember running up, we were allowed to go up to the top of the street, and I seen the Carnival coming past, and it was the first time I'd seen anything like it, to be quite honest with you. And in the latter years, of course, you know, getting older, you start, like, going on the, the Carnival procession and stuff. And then again, getting older, getting past 16, 17, and then total changes, kind of getting more involved in Carnival. Um, and my, my getting involved with Carnival was more from a music scene, because I used to work with sound systems and stuff like that, and DJing. Carnival is boss, now. it's just like, it's, 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 a great, it's a great way of like bringing people together, expressing culture, um, and releasing the vibes, you know what I mean? You know, I mean, like I say, it was, Carnival used to be electric. <laughs> How important was Carnival to the community and to the city? There was a big build up to Carnival because you had like the costume makers, so I mean, and the, the community was totally different then as well, do you know what I mean? I would say Carnival was definitely a community thing because it was based, you know, the, 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 you know everyone used to meet on the day anyway, right by the, the Caribbean, you know, centre. And, you know, weeks leading up there, there'd be loads of different projects on, and, you know, loads of women who would be doing costume making. And they had carnival queens and all those kind of things. And they had carnival queen competitions leading up and music events leading up. I mean, there was a big build up to carnival. And then when carnival went off, I mean, it went off. It was, um, it was boss, you know. It was so pinnacle. It was like the one thing a year that everyone looked to and said, yeah, that's it, it's coming, you know what I mean? And it was well attended. I mean, you know, when the carnival used to run, people from all that, like, everywhere used to come from out of town because there was all that, there was all that carnival, like, you know, it's Liverpool's carnival, it's who's carnival's next, you know, so there was city to city, Manchester League. Um, Bradford, uh, Uddersfield, um, you know, you name them, name them, besides London, do you know what I mean? Because London, of course, as we all know, is the carnival in the country. But, you know, every city had a carnival, and it seemed like then times, you kind of followed the carnival trail, do you get what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, things change, don't they? We're here at the Mayside Caribbean Centre, and it's a uh, lovely car park and this used to be home to the Liverpool Carnival back in the uh, 90s and we've bumped into Mr Ivan Freeman. Ivan how are you sir? Uh, yeah fine thank you. <laughs> That's good. Now Ivan you were um, one of the original kind of founder members to, to the Liverpool Carnival weren't you? How, 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 how was it back, back then? <laughs> Yeah, well, back in the day, I was like um, a volunteer uh, when the original carnival got set up here by um, the Caribbean members. One was, I think, Patrona Lashley and the great Herbie Higgins. Both of them good, good people for the community and a lot of the Caribbean members. And there was a lot of people like myself as uh, we were young and we got involved until the day uh, it finally, you know, demise like. But in all them years, uh, we helped. Uh, along with um, a group who finally uh, did take over it at one stage it was their world promotion and kept it really going for years and years and it's credit to their hard work that uh, the carnival uh, grew in, in the way that it did. This is the original spot, it looks quite like scarce and stuff now but looking around what was what was on here, how was it kind of filled? Oh there was everything uh, here and also up on the field you can see which got uh, given the name a shanty field, a shanty lawn. Uh, on the shanty lawn, it was more like um, where people could sit down, relax, uh, fun fair and stuff here. You had the uh, traditional marquees with the sound systems playing, uh, competition with the sound systems. You had the main stage with uh, all the local bands on. 
the karma what was about say, the reflection of like the happiness the sadness the good things and that's what to me karma what was about the spirit of the people from the community and that spirit was generated and everything and it got taken uh, away to people who visit the carnival to their city and they talked about yeah. Liverpool. Back then carnival was really successful, you know, good vibes, good energies, you know, people coming together is the sense that we've kind of gathered and, you know, it, it took a lull for a while but it's back now with Brouhaha. How important do you think that, you know, it is for um, organisations like Brouhaha and even if it wasn't them, if it was someone else to keep carnival alive? Yeah, well, there's been a, a lot of... Um, yeah, tremendous activity with Buha over the years and what they do and it's thanks to them that they kept the spirits of uh, the community and, and the, the carnival going. It might be a, the carnival as people uh, used to know but it is a carnival, do you know what I mean? It's just that it's transformed into a new entity which carnival has to over the years from time it was just one time I said like steel pan and then it went into the sound systems from the 70s to the late 90s and then it's transformed into like uh, a conglomerate of like people from all over the world as Bruhaha is you know and they produce that show successfully every year do you know what I mean and it's thanks to them um, that we still have something you know what I mean So Mandy, just tell us about your role within Brugha Hawk. I prep, prepare the costumes, sort them out, organise them, make them up when they've come from the designer. So he, he brings a prototype down from London. I make the costumes up, me and a big team of other volunteers, will we make them costumes up for the community. Do the workshops, take the costumes out to them and they play with them and make them up themselves and I finish them off, me and the girls. So tell me about your first memories of uh, Carnival. The Carnival was spectacular, it was very, it was lots of floats, everything seemed to happen on floats but there was a lot of people walking as well in parades. For me it was more of a meeting place for people I haven't seen for years. So Carnival's moved forward and it's, it's under a different guise now as Brew Haha. How do you see it developing with, with the community? Um, well, I think the, the community are very much involved with it. Like yourself doing this interview, the community are involved in it. Maybe they don't realise they are, but they are a lot. The future of it is already international and has been for a long time. Maybe the future for Brouhaha could be House of Brouhaha, a bigger, bigger company with a, a more involvement, as in more use being housed in this building and say this whole building being just the house of carnival, I, I would love it to be like that. Hey Ray, can you just tell me your full name and your role? My name is Ray Mahabe, I'm the artistic director for carnival for Brouhaha. I came to work, um, a, I think it's about 12 years ago on a project which was funded through the Arts Council and I met Giles. And Giles actually came, when he became the director of Brouhaha, he asked me to come and um, work with him on the carnival element of the festival. Where do you get your inspiration from for the costume kind of design? Kind of work with what's happening around us, what's, what's in the environment, what's in society right now and try and bring that towards, towards the people. A lot of times it's, it's, it's not so much visually there but it's about the people that are actually getting involved yeah. in the project to understand a little more of what, what, they, be, what they will be portraying. So, where do you see the future of Carnival? It, it, the only thing that we can hope for is that it grows and it continues the way we've been going. Just keep on growing and keep on encouraging more people, different cultures, appreciating what we've got as people. So, why is Carnival important for the city and the community? I think because it shows Multicultural. Another another heritage, yeah. and it's nice for people to learn about other people's heritage and take and if they can take part in that, it's good because in Trinidad when you have carnival, everybody comes together as one, mm. and we really need that in this city. I think carnival is important to the city because we are one of the biggest diverse cities, um, especially with Toxteth, the type of community it is. It's a highly mixed community. It's got 
so many different cultures in it. Um, everybody is really friendly. Everybody does work as a community when it's needed, and everyone will come together with it. And I think it's really great that one day of the year, the whole city is all together to, to share in what what the carnival is about and stuff. And obviously, the main thing for me with carnival is that it's the culture and the diversity of the city. It's all about the community, bringing communities together, do you know what I mean, having that kind of like cohesion. And it brings completely diverse communities all together mm. and to see everybody dancing and having fun and eating food and watching great music uh, and getting together, you know, not just in the avenue but also in Princess Park when it comes together about yeah. two o'clock. Just to see all that happening, it's just wonderful. It's about colours, about float, it's about the Caribbean. So it always used to start there and go all the way around to let the whole community come together. My biggest memories were the Academy Centre, doing the floats, seeing all the older people putting all the floats together and stuff. And it was all about being on a truck then, standing on a truck and thinking why are all these people watching you, um, obviously with the music and stuff. It was something that you really planned for, you were like, you know what, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get that, you'd borrow this, you'd sew that and you'd work on it like all year. It was like a big thing and then all the boys would compete with the sound systems. Bring it, not compete in a, in, a, in a negative way, but more yeah. like our sound system's better than your sound system, that kind of a way. And it was really, it was probably when I was young, the one time I'd see everybody. Because I don't, I don't really get to go to events now where I see the whole community and Carnival's one of those times where you do. You see so many different cities and so many different cultures in one yeah. building. It was really good. It used to fascinate me. You'd see people there that you would never have seen in your life. Um, and you would see them there every year. The carnival has changed over the years because then it was the Caribbean Carnival. It all operated from the Caribbean Centre. Uh, and back then, you know, um, funding was different, so the, the actual format was different. Uh, there were far more float, there were far more Caribbean spirit and influence and culture. Since, since then, we've, you know, we have changed the format of Carnival. And Broad International, I think, uh, uh, attempt is to widen um, carnival experience, not just on you know one culture, not just Caribbean, but to widen it uh, beyond um, Liverpool and beyond what we know as Caribbean. I've been involved in this carnival for nearly five years, um, and I love every bit of it. Uh, the, uh, the individuals who organise it are just stunning, amazing. I uh, come up with great ideas year mm. after year. And uh, uh, last year, as Deputy Lord Mayor, it was one of my first events, was actually opening last year's carnival in July. And I remember dancing at the front of the carnival for about five minutes, and then I stopped, because there's only so much da dancing <laughs> you can do. At the time when I used to go to carnivals, as a young girl, it was about the black community. But what's nice in Liverpool now is that some people don't like it, but I actually like the fact that it's a multiracial affair. I think that's important. Mm. We need that. We do. I see the future of Carnival go, and hopefully, I would like it to go like not an ill Carnival. Okay. Um, get it back to the way it used to be. Obviously, we did have a time where the carnival was no longer in Liverpool yeah. um, and I think I see the future of the carnival is it's going to start getting bigger and better we're going to start bringing in different bands being able to get more people involved um, getting more different diverse types of costumes and things like that um, hopefully it will be bigger and better this year as we go on Five years time I think carnival would be even more diverse than it is now I mean there's a lot of different communities taking part the Polish community is starting to take part in carnival. I'd also like to see how the young people come through carnival and perhaps some of the kids now might be the designers or the creators yeah. of tomorrow um, and how the, the next generation will enter carnival. It's going to be interesting. I'm a board member of the Arts Council and every year when they talk about cuts and what, who they can support there's organisations that we've got to defend and organisations like Brouhaha, and there are others, but Brouhaha in particular, you know, to bring together 20,000 people year after year, and it is growing, and money is getting tighter, and is getting less, and, and sometimes things uh, you know, are done on a shoestring, but they don't look as though they are. Look at the costumes, look at the amount of involvement from the communities. There are communities from North Liverpool, 
East Liverpool, South Liverpool, Central Liverpool all come together and put on their own events, their own take on what Carnival is. Just watching that, different people's different take on what Carnival is, is stunning. In Liverpool, Liverpool Light, there's more people in the census tick the box other than anywhere else in the UK. And I don't like the word other, it means the outside to me. But Liverpool is the inside, and to celebrate that diversity of culture, it just, you know, it's just a joy, it's a complete joy. It doesn't matter that I'm a white guy, I, you know, it doesn't matter at all, I'm just part of this, and I'm a Mancunian, you know, we're supposed to hate each other. <laughs> and to come to Liverpool and to see Bruhaha every year, and the continuity that they keep on going yeah. in very difficult times, and they bring people from the outside, and those little babies then go and give birth outside of Liverpool, I think is powerful. Cool. We need young men like you lot to get dressed up, forget your inhibi inhibitions. <laughs> Start dressing up and dancing in the street with us. Yeah. Because that's what it's all about. I'm all for getting involved. Right, I'm yeah, all for yeah. getting involved in Carnival. Yeah. Right, well, just for that, Ben. Like <laughs> right, this year, he's in our band. The future of Carnival is, is young people and bigger and better and young people. Yeah, because we're getting older now. You can only go on for so long. You know, the body gets old after buying it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it doesn't matter how old you are, Carnival. Yeah. It's that. Yeah. Go, so, ladies. Thank you. On the 27th of July this year, Carnival came once again to the streets of Liverpool in an undoubtedly spectacular fashion with the Brouhaha International Carnival 2013. Revelers, artists and performers descended on Princess Park and Princess Avenue in unprecedented numbers to witness the culmination of months of hard work, planning and preparation. With an estimated 50,000 people in attendance across the park and parade route, there can be little doubt that the spirit of Carnival in Liverpool is still well and truly alive and kicking. Carnival is an expression and joy. It's a community and togetherness. It's by the people and for the people. A unique form of entertainment that is designed to inspire and bring individuals closer together. Through the magic of Carnival, communities unite and express themselves. Generational gaps are bridged and racial divides become non-existent. Carnival is history. Carnival is future. Carnival is love. And love is life. So I hope you've liked what we've produced so far. This is only a snippet, and I'm sure you've got your own memories of what Carnival was like back in the day. Um, but there is one person that we haven't taken a look at, and that's Shadow. The, the most famous man of all was uh, Mr. Arnold Davis, the great Shadow. 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 I used to introduce him as the eighth wonder of the world, the <laughs> Shadow. And he was good. The Shadow, pinnacle to Carnival back then. Was like you know, like I was just saying before, the king of carnival. Shadow was one of the greatest people you'd ever uh, see in any. Car in fact, he he, he went across uh, to Trinidad and uh, to the Jamaican carnivals and won the um, first prize in them carnivals. The best one that was really parked up, was parked up by the old Grammy Street School. It's gone now, but Shadow was there, and he had the, he had this flatbed, and he was just sitting, you know. Abraham Lincoln, but he was covered all in white. And he was just sitting on television was down, taking it all. And next thing, all he done was down the man, the man, the man collapsed. He went, it's alive, he went. Sound shut, it's shadow. Every year that man was something different, costume wise. He used to come, we'd all wait for him to see what he's come with this year. One time he came as a mummy. He was quasi married him, and people weren't looking at his belt. You know, it's one time he was Abraham Lincoln. Okay. And he was brilliant. And uh, one year he came as Batman and thought he could fly. He got on top of it and thought, but he did it himself. <laughs> and did he jump off? He did. <laughs> <laughs> he was Jesus Christ and he had some boy whipping him and he was carrying a big proper wooden cross and he had some boy whipping him. He done George Washington, he done Tutankhamen. Carmen, uh, did, did another one he done. Big famous like. 
That's it, that was it, the 50 pence piece one. My best one from Benjamin was when he was the 50 pence piece. Okay. Wow, when he was the real McCoy and all the silver and that. He dressed up like a 50 pence piece and honest to God it was a work of art. It was fantastic. And I seen this, I said, what? It was sitting really still and I said to the children, well that's a real person sitting there. They said, no it isn't. And I said, shadow. And he said, what girl? And they all ran. <laughs> Is that real? Is it? No, so that's Shadow. Everybody knew Shadow. Everybody knew Shadow. Yeah, he used to dress up, prepare himself, man, honestly. And sometimes, them days we had some good summers, you know. Supposed to be, 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 be painted up and that silver and all that, you know, it was great. He was, you know, he won every year. You know Shadow's going to win it, yeah. you know. One thing with Shadow was, no matter what he was dressed as, the rail took over him. He was the epitome of carnival, he was. People should, even if they don't know about say, Arnold Davis, the great shadow, they should look upon some historic, you know, uh, papers or stuff online to see if he's there and check him out, check him out, check him out, check him out. Without money, I know it really makes no difference. I've got love, I know. Easy squeezing makes no riot if you know it's gonna hurt you. Play it cool. Easy squeezing makes no riot if you know it's gonna hurt you. 